Hi everyone, you're watching Hard Video Audio Stuff. For you today, I've got a rundown of everything you need to know about Sony's A6600, which was released as near as makes no difference in tandem with Canon's 90D. Let's dive in. Everything mentioned in this video is linked below. Please have a browse there, that's the best way to support my channel. So this Sony A6600 is not, as many expected it to be, a mini A9. It actually looks quite a lot like an A6500 with just a couple of upgrades in true Sony style. Anyway, it has the same 24.2 megapixel APS-C sensor. Thankfully, it's still a very good sensor, so I'm not gonna berate Sony too much for sticking with it. Even though Canon's 90D now has a nice 32 and a half megapixel sensor, 24 megapixels would certainly be plenty for me. And of course, that sensor is stabilized, which is just a lovely thing. I've done lots of testing over the years, and most of the time I found the in-body stabilization to be superior to lens stabilization. Video-wise, it shoots 4K video at up to 30 frames per second in Super 35 format, with full pixel readout, no pixel binning, because Sony have used oversampling, which works brilliantly. To expect any more from a little camera like this I think would be really unfair. I've seen some people out there whinging that it doesn't have 4K at 60 frames a second or 4K at 10 bit, which I just, I don't understand for a camera like this. However, you do get Sony's usual S-Log2 and S-Log3 and their HLG Hybrid Log Gamma, which are all lovely tools to have. Video will be in Sony's usual codecs, which I expect most people will be using the super efficient and very good, in my opinion, XAVCS codec. It's absolutely perfect for a little camera like this. So at this point, you're probably thinking, what have Sony actually added to this new A6600? Well, the headline is that they've added a vastly larger capacity Z type battery for industry leading battery life and Sony say that's approximately 720 photos worth, but I'd be really interested to see how that translates to shooting video. As a result of this larger battery, we also get a larger grip, which I wanted from the A6000 line for a long time, so I, I, I really like that. The only other physical change is that Sony have added a headphone jack, which I know a lot of people who do things like run and gun video will absolutely love. There's really little excuse for missing out this feature on a camera like this, and so I'm very glad it's now here, albeit a little confused that it's taken so long. The only other addition, as far as I can tell, is the improved eye autofocus in video. Hmm. That's funny, isn't it? The 90D and A6600 both released in the same week, both boasting new eye autofocus performance and vastly improved battery life. Coincidence? The release price of this A6600 is around £1,400 slash dollars slash euros, which was a little, was kind of a little more than I was expecting, to be honest. Not to say that it's a bad deal, it's still a lot of camera for your money, but it's also solidly into A7 III territory, which personally I would much rather have, and I see that as quite a big problem for this camera. So what do you think? Is this a necessary update? Are there too many cameras in the A6000 range? Are you going to buy the A6600? Is it missing any features that you were hoping for? Please let me know your thoughts in the comments section below. And consider subscribing to my channel by hitting the blob over my shoulder and check the links below. That's the best way to support my channel. And until next time, let's help each other out and shoot better video. See you guys. Holding